So the circulating tumor cells is, you know, people have been trying to do this for a few years. Um, the technologies are getting better to enable us to, to sort of isolate these tumor cells from, our, from the circulation. And the reason that's important is, you know, rather than having to biopsy places that are hard to get to and put patients through uh, sort of invasive procedures, being able to, to, to isolate the cells from the circulation means that we could potentially learn things about their tumor just from a simple blood draw, which is much less invasive. PD-1 and pd one checkpoint inhibitors are very exciting new therapies. Uh, they've been approved in melanoma. They're also being looked at in, in, in just about every other cancer you can imagine, including uh, uh, non-small cell lung cancer, which is what I'm looking at them in. And so, you know, what we want to do is learn a, as much about the pdl one status and how that affects, you know, whether patients respond to treatment or not. And so coupling those two kind of new, new technologies, we're trying to look at these circulating tumor cells to see if it's even feasible to tell whether um, they have pdl one on, on the outside of the cell surface. And if it turns out that that's a very good marker for, for treatment, um, for response to treatment, then we can potentially look at people's cells uh, just by simple blood draws and be able to tell whether or not they're going to respond to these therapies. So it's kind of looking uh, at something that's never been looked at before, as far as we know. 10, 15, maybe 20, 30 years ago uh, for lung cancer, we didn't have a ton of options for those patients. We used chemotherapy and it worked in some and, and didn't work so well in others. And, and then once the chemotherapy stopped working, we were, we were kind of out of options. And over the last probably 10 or 15 years, the number of therapies that have come out for, for non-small cell lung cancer has been growing by quite a bit. And, and there are some very exciting therapies like immunotherapy and targeted therapies. And the more we learn about these therapies and the more we learn about these cancers and how to sort of further characterize them and, and further look at patients on a more individual basis and less as a, a major, a big group of patients that all fit into the same category, we are more able to provide treatments to benefit each individual patient than we were, say, 20 years ago. You know, a big part of, of cancer research is just uh, funding. Uh, there are a lot of great ideas out there. There are a lot of, of great researchers, and sometimes it's just a matter of finding enough funding to, to get the trials uh, going that need to be done to answer some very important questions that we have. And uh, that's why I think the Fisher Award is so important because it helps fund some of that research and helps that research go forward. So we're very much appreciative of that. Of, of that.